Well, hello folks, Pastor Rocky, hope you're doing great today. We have been in the book of John for some time. Jesus told his disciples he would, he would go prepare a place for them. And then he's telling them how to live. And we're getting now to the point in the 16th chapter where he's going to be going into the garden to pray. And he's telling his disciples these various things that they need to understand. And they're having some difficulty in doing it because actually it's come to the time where, well, you kind of got to understand that this is going to happen. So you have to make some decisions on what you're going to do with it. I think that's uh, very uh, important for us to consider about what is taking place in our world, what is taking place in our life, and what we're going to do about it. You know, there's a there's a opportunity that you have to stand or to go along with uh, whatever's going on. And uh, it's difficult either way. Uh, and I mean that with sincerity. It's difficult to stand because often when you stand, you stand by yourself. You put yourself out there as a spot uh, that somebody can uh, take a shot at. Uh, when you run with a crowd, you just go and get lost among the people. You just become another number. And so either way, it's a challenging way to do it. I think it's encouraging for us to understand what Jesus says to his disciples. He had talked to them about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit would come into them and help them with various areas of life that they would be challenged by. And then we talked about yesterday where Jesus said, what the Spirit hears, He's going to tell you because I am the Spirit that's coming to you from me to you. So that's very important, very beneficial. But then it says here uh, in verse number uh, 16, He says, A little while you shall see me uh, not, uh, you shall not see me, and again a little while and you shall see me uh, because I go to my Father. And then some of the disciples, listen to this, verse 17. Some of the disciples among them said, uh, among themselves, what is this that Jesus said to us? A little while and we shall not see him. And again, a little while and we shall see him. Uh, and because he goes to the Father, they, they didn't understand that. They're asking the question. They're talking among themselves as anybody else would. But now listen to this. Verse 18. Then, the Bible says, they said, therefore, what is this that Jesus said? A little while, we cannot tell what he really is saying. Jesus is talking, we know this already, Jesus is talking to them about going into the, going, going to the cross, dying, going to the tomb. Three days later, he's going to, a little while you're going to, you're not going to see me in a little while, then a little while you're going to see me. That's, that's his going to the cross. That's a little while you, you're going to see me. I'm going to go to the cross. Then when they put me in the ground, you're not going to see me. Then when I resurrect, you're going to see me again. That's what he's talking about. So here they're, con they're confused about this particular situation. They're, uh, they're challenged about it because they're, they're facing something they've never faced before. And Jesus is being very clear with them, but they just don't get it. You know, and sometimes that happens to us. Sometimes we, you know, we, we really want to know what God is saying to us. We really desire to understand what He is saying to us, but sometimes we just don't get it. I mean, we, we're trying, we want to. And, and, and when Jesus says, uh, some things like this, which is so critical, and let, let me read it to you again. Uh, Jesus said, a little while, this is verse 16, and you shall not see me. Now that's when he's going to go to the tomb. And again, a little while, and you shall see me because I go to my father. Now this is after he resurrects. So we got that clear, right? I mean, you understand that. So we're good to go here. Now listen to this, verse, uh, verse number uh, 17. Then said some of the disciples among themselves, what is this that Jesus says to us? A little while and we shall not see him. And then again, a little while we shall see him because he goes to the Father. And they said, therefore, verse 18, what is this that Jesus says? A little while and we cannot tell really what he's saying. Well, for us, uh, we kind of understand that because we're looking back at it. But for the present day disciple at this time period, that was a very challenging thing for them to hear. I mean, you're here, you're not here, you're going to be here, you're not going to be here, what's going on? And this is the valuable part of uh, exposition uh, Bible study. Uh, the valuable part of that is that when you start breaking things down, you begin to see them a lot more clearer. The three attributes that we have of God is He's omnipresent, that means He's everywhere at the same time. Omnipotent, has all power, and omniscient, knows everything. So, in those three characteristics, we find God working in so many, well, in everything, really. So, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. 
But also, he is not welcomed everywhere at the same time. Just because he's there doesn't mean that he's welcomed. Uh, he is all-inclusive to those that are receiving him, but he's everywhere to everybody that's ever lived or will live, because he is omnipresent. Well, the disciples are having a difficult time. Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus, now we've established the point that Jesus is talking about. They're going to arrest me. They're going to put me on the cross. You're going to see me for a little while. Then you're not going to see me. That's when they put him in the ground. And then you're going to see me again for a little while. And then I'm going to go back to the Father. So we understand that. But now listen to what Jesus says by way of comfort. Uh, I love this. Verse 19. Now Jesus knew that they desired to ask him the question, what do you mean when you said these things? And in the process of that, Jesus already knew that these men were talking among themselves. Why? Because he knows everything. He knows everything. He's everywhere. So he already knows what you're thinking. He already knows what I'm thinking. He already knows. Uh, and so he already knows. So then this is what he does, which is so cool. Verse 19. Do you inquire among yourselves of what I said a little while? You shall see me not, and then again a little while, and you shall see me. He, he knows what they, he knows, and, and this has got to blow their mind, right? I mean, I mean, they, they got to be saying, wow, man, I mean, that's exactly what we were thinking about and talking about. And he's told us exactly what we're thinking and, and talking about. And that's exactly the way it is with us. That's, that's one of the things that Jesus Christ wants us to understand about him. He knows. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what's on your mind. He knows where you've been. He knows where you are. He knows who you are. He knows, he knows who you've been. He knows who you're trying to be. He knows it all. And he asks these questions and he simply gave them a chance to say, yes, Lord. Yeah, we, I, yeah, you're right. And of course he's right because he knows. But now listen to this. With the context by which we have been speaking, they're going to arrest him. They're going to beat him. They're going to have that mock trial. It's going to be a couple days. And they're going to put him on the cross. They're going, to, they're going to beat him. They're going to crucify him. He's going to die. They're going to take him off the cross. He's in the ground now. The Bible says in John 20, uh, this very book in John 20, that they're hid because they're scared because Jesus is now gone and they don't know what to do. So there is apprehension here. And this is what Jesus says, which I think is so fantastic. Because Jesus knows that these guys love him. There's no question about that. But now listen to this. Verse 20. Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you that you shall weep and lament, and the world shall rejoice, and you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. That is such an incredible, awesome statement. You see, the world thought they were doing a favor by killing Jesus. The leadership, if they'd studied the scriptures, they would have known. They didn't pay any attention to that. The same crowd seven days before that was crying out Hosanna would soon be crying out crucify him. Jesus knew that these disciples would take this hard and knew that the world would be happy about it and the disciples would be sad about it. Listen to that verse again with that being in, my, in, in your mind. Check this out. Let's, let's get a hold of this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. I don't know, have any idea what you're going through today, but I do know that Jesus knows that. I do know that. I do know that Jesus Christ not only knows that, but he loves you and he's going to prepare a way for you. You may have sorrow and sadness today, but one of the things that's important to understand is that your sadness and sorrow can turn into joy if I put my hope and my faith in Jesus Christ. It was a sad day for these disciples. There's no doubt about it. Very true, very sad. But Jesus still promised them that he would overcome. And whatever's facing you, you can overcome in his name. He will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. Stand strong, be strong, and believe what he said, because if you do that, God will bless you for it. God bless you. We love you, and goodbye.